We need to simulate imbalanced dataset problem in convolutional neural networks and we prepared the data according to this and we will be using the exactly same code with our Keras data generator example. You will use the same code and let's delete here and we will be using the same code because I don't want to confuse you with the new convolutional neural network architecture and our aim is uh, observing the imbalance dataset problem and finding solutions and I will have uh, a little bit uh, change we will have a little bit uh, change in our code because for reducing the training time I want to uh, actually uh, freeze all convolutional neural network filters and only train it only train the top of the convolutional neural network this is a way of transfer learning and to actually I visualized it but let's let's go back to the code and let's see uh, how many layers we have in convolutional neural networks and to show them we need to have four loop and we need to enumerate uh, our base models, our convolutional neural network models, layers. And actually, I we have no problem, I think. And and then we need to print the print the numbers of it, uh, print the corresponding numbers, and we need to get the name of the layers. And when we train it, uh, sorry, when we run it, I hope that we won't it won't fit it. When we train it, we can see that uh, there are uh, 310 layers, and according to this, uh, we need to freeze uh, some layers, and these layers are uh, actually has the number of 310, and I know that it will happen. Well, I want to freeze all convolutional neural network filters to reduce the training time and we will observe some results uh, from uh, from our code and let's get back we have 310 code, uh, 310 filters in convolutional neural networks and we need to freeze it like that this is exactly the same uh, with our first convolutional neural network code so the thing that we should change is actually we need to change the directory uh, in our Im imbalance CNN folder. We have the directory of train. This means it means that we have a training data in here, and it has uh, dog and cat folders. And we need to delete this, and also to organize the uh, sorry, organize the imbalance data set. Uh, sorry, in we need to organize the validation data, and we will do it uh, in the same way with uh, our code, uh, our previous code. Well, now we are done. Actually, I want to indicate that uh, you need to check the uh, normalization of your architecture. We have inception v3 here, and we need to check its normalization uh, especially in your in Keras documentation or in uh, Keras codes so that we can gain a fast uh, we can gain a fast uh, results well this is the original code that is in uh, Keras uh, in, that is in Keras and this is actually is written by Francois Cholet that is the creator of Keras and it apply uh, this preprocess but well we can do it if we don't have uh, if we don't wanna uh, create a data generator with image data generator class however uh, we can only apply uh, this, risk, this rescaling however uh, in the application of uh, building powerful uh, image classification model 
they get a good accuracy they get a 80 percent of accuracy at, at first attempt and they only rescale it i actually i want to indicate that this is not a big deal uh, because your data set is small and uh, your weights will be good according to this uh, your weights will be easily changed and uh, your weights will cause a good accuracy uh, according to your learning rate according to your model but if your data set is small uh, you don't need exact uh, data pre-processing and we will just be using the rescaling uh, in that format and actually the exact way to uh, work like and to work with exactly the same principle with inception v3 is uh, doing the rescale good and actually there there are methods to apply the exact normalization or pre-processing however uh, in your application this won't be a problem and if you normalize your data between 0 and 1 in uh, convolutional neural networks in classification problems this won't be a problem this will be a problem in generative adversarial neural networks but this won't be a problem in this case so you don't need to rescale it exactly and if you have problems to rescaling uh, and if you want to use Keras image data generator function doesn't uh, allow uh, much change however you can apply some methods to uh, you can apply some functions to image data generator and you can achieve true way of pre-processing or normal normalization however that's that won't be a problem in this example and in most of uh, fine-tuning examples and to uh, rescale the image data between 0 and 1 uh, we will in image data generator we need to rescale it with 1 over 255 and this is not my plan to uh, talk about uh, RGB channels and their values between 0 and 255 and if you have a claim like this I can also uh, talk about it and add it to uh, the course and we will need to apply uh, the same rescaling with validation data generator and also in our test application we also need to or in our application in our production we need to apply the same rescaling or same normalization with our test this is very important and this is very crucial and maybe you can think that uh, you have a good accuracy in training and validation but getting a bad uh, accuracy in test so the problem can be the rescaling you need to apply the same rescaling uh, with the same principle with training and validation so what you apply in training you need to apply in testing well now we are ready to apply and I hope that we don't have a problem let's run our code and this will show uh, the how many images or how many samples per class and we will observe it and I think that we can uh, increase the epochs uh, well let's say that to guarantee of getting a good accuracy well we have a problem in IMB CNN we have we don't have wall we have validation sorry for that and to guarantee the of getting good, good accuracy we can increase the EPO and for the batch size we can increase it uh, to get a uh, as fast as uh, to get a good accuracy as fast as we can and let's say that let's try uh, 50 and let's lower the le learning rate uh, sorry let's increase the learning rate and let's try it and if batch size is a problem we can uh, make it affordable by uh, by the RAM of our computer and I hope we can see it we can see we can also we can observe imbalance data set problem uh, with this example and I don't want to waste your time but I want to show this we have actually f uh, 51 images per class in validation and we have thousand images per cat 
300 images, 301 images for per dog in training, and this computer has no GPU, and it will be uh, hard to get a uh, fast. If it will be hard to get the fast results, and also this is the fastest way uh, to try. If you have CPU, uh, you can have uh, you can freeze all the convolutional neural network layers. And the reason of actually I learned them because there was no uh, Google Colab, and also uh, there was no uh, I I didn't have a GPU. I, actually, I still don't have a GPU. I use Google Colab or other services. And the reason of knowing these principles, uh, the, these principles are about getting a fast, good and fast accuracy uh, in a computer that has CPU. I know that it will take time, uh, but this is our first EPO, and it, uh, it for our first EPO lasted in lasted in more than a minute. However, uh, we get a good accuracy in our training, and we get a good validation accuracy. Uh, we don't have a good validation accuracy according to our imbalanced data set problem we should be aware of it but after uh, getting a good accuracy in training and getting a bad accuracy in validation accuracy bad accuracy bad, bad, sorry bad accuracy in validation and after nearly 10 epoch we will get back to the video and we will be talking about uh, the results so now I'm pausing the video then I will be talking about uh, our results. Well, I'm not sure that how many times that training time steals, and we see that 72 seconds per step, and it's probably a little bit more than 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, we see that you can see that our accuracy cannot go further than let's say that 82 percent. Whatever the accuracy is, we always have the validation, low validation accuracy. Actually, I can say that. Actually, I could, I should firstly indicate that in the, if you have small number of data, you can see the accuracy, hundred percent accuracy in training, but this is not possible in validation accuracy, and you can see that validation accuracy cannot exceed. Uh, fifty percent. I can guarantee you that it is these fifty percent is actually the data of validation of CAT. Well, we have fifty images in CAT dataset uh, in validation of CAT, and I can guarantee to you that the loss of fifty percent is from dog, and in classification of dog. In, in the testing stage, you have uh, less accuracy uh, because of that, because of imbalanced data set problem. So the 50% is actually the number of predicted uh, number of true classification, but this 50% is actually uh, you have 100% uh, of classifying in CAT, well, you have a very good classifier uh, of CAT, but actually we, in our data, our, our convolutional network architecture didn't even get uh, the dog, didn't even get a true accuracy for the dog. I mean that uh, all of the true predicted images are from the all images in CAT folder and Actually, you, you can see that validation accuracy is increasing after 11 EPO, and you see that training accuracy is fluctuating. Well, you can say that uh, this is the result of a uh, large uh, learning rate. Uh, however, this won't, uh, this won't exceed uh, uh, 80% uh, because your data is imbalanced. Let's uh, see the 
other epochs and actually the reason of getting a low validation accuracy is the imbalanced data set problem well I'm waiting for the 14 EPO and I want to talk about the training accuracy and you see that it it's, it is a very good value to have 72% uh, of accuracy but in validation accuracy you are not that good our convolutional neural network architecture is not that good so our aim should be uh, have a balance in training accuracy and validation accuracy these numbers should be similar in balanced data set and if we have a good accuracy in training and validation this means that our convolutional neural network architecture is done with training uh, maybe you can improve it but you, if you have a uh, data that is imbalanced uh, the case is that you always have a bad validation accuracy when it's compared to the training accuracy and you see that 82% of the training data is classified correctly however in validation data set doesn't exceed 70% and this is actually a problem for convolutional neural networks imbalanced data set is a problem of convolutional neural networks or deep learning or machine learning algorithms so this is the way of simulation of imbalanced data set problem in convolutional neural networks and then we will try to solve it by uh, some concepts that we talked in uh, several solutions of uh, imbalanced data set problem. We will be applying class weight solution firstly and then we will go to the other solutions.